Hitherto, flight recap, talking about things like number of invites that were sent, bugs reported, and many other changes with it as well. Development status on various MCC features, and some playlists and matchmaking changes as well being brought up in this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps the video get more recognition so more people get to stay in the know with everything going on in Halo. So let's get right into the content here. So in my previous video, I broke down a lot of the stuff that was going on with this recent April month end dev update that we get. And it was a big boy as always when it comes to these month end updates. And I left out one particular thing was a Halo 2 flighting recap because I feel like it deserved its own video. So an interesting fact is that there were over 100,000 invites initially sent for this Halo 2 flighting process. And then we had that second wave of invites, which was an additional 75,000 people that were invited. Now we don't have any numbers of exactly how many people actually played. Uh, previously, we did have some statistical breakdown showing about 50% of people that were invited actually played the flight. Uh, that was with Halo Reach on PC. So obviously depending on which game they're playing, it could be a little bit higher, it could be a little bit lower. Not only was 343 testing out the game, obviously, but they're testing out some you know, additional features that side of the game itself, like the new flighting invites, where basically you got a notification on email, they have an invite, and they have to go to the Halo Waypoint website to actually get the information that you need. And 343 found this to be a much more effective way to go about the inviting process. They basically said that this helped streamline the whole process when it comes to installation instructions, which obviously installing a private beta build of a game can be a little tricky at times. It's not super straightforward as your normal gaming download process is. And it also helped increase awareness of the support website, which if you guys don't know, pretty much every dev update before, they would harper on people saying, please check the known issues because there's so many repeat issues, but they noticed that with this whole system that they have now, there were way less uh, repeats of tickets being created on known issues, which does sound rather minor, but it actually is very huge. That way 343 can go around to finding out the errors that the game is currently having, prioritizing those, fixing what needs to be done first and getting the game out sooner. So this is a minor thing, but it actually has major implications to it. So I'm really glad that this new process they were able to put together actually helped out with uh, understanding which issues have been created. Now mentioning issues and tickets, there were actually over 2,000 tickets in total that were created mentioning 46 different types of tickets, essentially what they call buckets, basically saying that these are similar types of errors that are being reported. Now they don't go into details of what those buckets are, but I'm sure we will see a list coming out soon, probably when the game actually does get released or maybe in a later weekly update. If that's so, I will make sure to update you guys on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed when that video does go live if it does happen. Also at the end of every flight, there are surveys that get sent out, but this time not everyone got a survey. A select few number of flight participants were actually sent uh, surveys. So uh, guys, check your emails, go on Halo Waypoint, help out the 343 MCC team to get this game up and running as soon as possible and understand how people are experiencing these flights and what could be improved on. They also do mention on this post saying, word for word saying, now looking forward to releasing Halo 2 on PC in the not so distant future. Now I have speculated multiple times on this channel about when the release date will happen. It's pretty almost certain that it's going to be happening in May, as they do mention in this uh, April dev update that it's a matter of weeks when this game comes out. So three at the most, at four if you count it as a week, uh, but I would say that you should expect a release date, I would say either on May 12th, 19th, or 26th, so keep an eye out for that, as the previous MCC games were released on Tuesday, so that's what I'm expecting as well. They also did break down a top list of community reported issues with the MCC at the moment right now, talking about the Xbox performance ever since CE was launched, that there was basically a big issue now when it comes to performance on Xbox, especially with H2A on the original Xbox, I find the game almost unplayable with the amount of frame drops that happen. 
Hopefully something like that can get figured out. Talking about CE being released on MCC, currently on PC, if you're playing above 60 FPS, there is a bullet spread issue where the higher FPS you count you have, the more your bullet spread is. Obviously a big issue directly affecting gameplay. We're saying that this will be resolved in our next update, which I'm assuming is when it comes to Halo 2 coming out to PC. So we got that looking forward to guys. So all you CE players will be able to play the game in a true fashion. Other things like audio issues, especially with Halo Reach, saying they're just kind of keeping up with that. Stuttering issues, says no active development on that at the moment, but they're looking into it for sure. Menu performance, obviously could definitely use a boost there for sure. Uh, we have also things like co-op latency, that's no update right now at the moment. Double keybinds, which we do know are going to be coming in with this next update for MCC, so that's going to be great to have that option for everyone. No updates currently on aim assist though, which I know is a really big issue. When I was playing the flight, I didn't notice aim assist to be that big of an issue. I think it's more of a reach hardcore kind of situation. Obviously aim assist does play a factor because it's there and it does implement how people aim on controller, but it's needed. And I think the level that is with, at least with uh, Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary, I think it's fine. And I didn't really notice too much of an issue because I was mainly playing on PC with mouse and keyboard, probably playing against most, mostly controller players, and that was doing just fine. Next section, we have three different categories when it comes to features being brought into the MCC. We have active development, in design, and backlog work. Let's start with the actively in design. These are the things that are gonna be coming to the MCC very soon, if not the next update when it comes with Halo 2. One of them mentioning the challenges system and progression system improvements that was flighted. Uh, we also have some UI improvements like roster and customization in multiple areas of the game. That's getting fixed up. Uh, text chat improvements. That's all they say. I don't know what kind of improvements they're looking to make, but they're looking to make some there. Uh, double keybinds, we do know that's coming in, which is gonna be a super nice feature. That's pretty standard for most PC games. And adjustable view model for your weapon, which is really nice. Uh, this was not in the flight and recently just added in. And it's really great to see that they're giving us different options of where to place the weapon on your screen within a 15 degree difference. The next section in design are basically parts that they're looking to add to the MCC or change, but they just need to design it out well, how they want to implement these features before going in and doing the hard work. Things like additional mod support, which would be super fantastic. As you had mentioned about additional video settings, I'm sure probably hopefully be able to break down the uh, different graphical settings besides having just be performance normal and enhanced. I would like to be able to customize that a little bit more as it's pretty standard for PC gaming. Uh, really nice thing, Steam account linking. Now this has been in design for a while, but I would really like to see this feature be added in as uh, sending invites to people on the MCC can be a bit tricky, especially with the flights. My God, that was a headache. And also customization improvements. And lastly, the backlog section. So basically these are the parts that they know people want. They want to get to these eventually, but right now they're not correctively in development right now. So input-based matchmaking, which kind of goes in along with crossplay between Xbox and PC. Currently, no work is being done on that at the moment. Uh, variable frame rate improvements. So that's basically saying if you're playing above 60, it gets a bit framey, even though you're playing at 120. Uh, so I wouldn't expect that to change very much anytime soon. Sadly, custom browser, again, not being uh, worked on currently. Um, I think the two big things right here are definitely the crossplay and custom browser. I think absolutely need to get worked on, guys. Those are two major features that will drastically change the gameplay experience when it comes to playing the MCC. As currently right now, the population isn't the best. Must be real. It's a game that was released in 2014, had a terrible launch. It's been getting better, but still not where it needs to be. And I think having the cross between Xbox and PC would greatly improve that. Uh, also, having the custom browser be a great way for people to get a chance to play your custom games. This feature works amazing in Halo 5. Obviously, going in and out of custom games can be a bit of a drag, but having that feature there where you can just post up a custom game, people can join and play. It's super great. It helps keep that community extra alive and vibrant. And I think those, those two features are absolutely need to be worked on. So now you know all this information about the MCC, but what can you do right now? Well, there actually was recently a playlist change as well. We have some free-for-all changes that I think are going to be very appreciated by the community. There will be two changes coming right now they have precision slayer ffa and auto slayer ffa as uh most of the free for all matches i've been playing have been auto slayer and honestly in my opinion i don't like playing that at all well, i definitely want to jump in and play some precision slayer i think that'd be a much more fun time for sure we have some play, 
Halo Reach playlist updates as well. So 4v4 map waiting has been updated. I'm hoping just to get some more variety because I know it was a big issue with Reach on uh, with the, when the game was released. Uh, they also changed some uh, matchmaking settings here. So ranked matching widened at higher levels for Halo Reach Hardcore and Halo Reach Invasion. Now, I touched on this uh, previous video, so basically now it sounds like people who are like level 50 or 40 can now match guys who are like level 30, maybe level 25, things like that. Uh, but if you're like me, I'm like level 22 in hardcore and like 15 on invasion because mainly I solo queue. Uh, probably going to be the same kind of experience you've been having previously, which is pretty tough to find matches. Also a very interesting thing, they had a rotational playlist which happens every time with the MCC, but surprisingly only CE Anniversary rotated out for 4v4s. We do not have any new players replacing that. Oftentimes we get new players to replace it, though we do know on May 6th that we will have Griff Ball coming in. Then later on May 13th, we'll have a big team battle update. Hopefully we get some new maps involved with that. May 20th, an experimental playlist. May 27th, monthly feedback maintenance. And then June 3rd, we have Shoddy Snipers coming in. So yeah guys, that's everything to do with the video today. We've got a bunch of news information when it comes to MCC. I hope this video kept you guys informed. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what you would like to see added in or fixed when it comes to the MCC. I'm sure we all have our own personal gripes with the game. And also, if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I've got a playlist to all my news and information videos if you've been on the loop for the last few days or weeks or so. And also guys, don't forget to tap subscribe to keep yourselves updated with all the things going on in Halo. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.